Hey guys, this is going to be a short IFR flight, uh, island hopping in Alaska. Departure is from Annette Island Airport down to the south, heading up north about 100 miles to Ringel Island. As you can see in the overlay, I have already have the RNAV runway 10 plotted out on Sky Vector, and I've chosen the level island initial approach fix um, for this flight. Currently I'm just on the ground right now getting uh, the GPS and nav system set up and ready for the flight. It's always advisable to get as much done at zero airspeed and zero altitude. And get as far ahead of the plane as possible and um, it just kind of minimizes your workload instead of trying to fly the plane and get the GPS and everything set up while you're uh, managing the autopilot and just general aircraft control. There is a block of clear air above the first layer of weather, so I plan this flight at 6,000 to take advantage of the visual conditions as much as possible. There is a VOR DME about a mile north of the field, which I plan on using initially just to give me some essay on where I am in case any of my GPS systems uh, crap out on me or whatever. So um, I'm plugging that into the GPS now on my, uh, on my NAV1. It's always a good idea to have uh, redundancy in your nav aids and to back yourself up to the max extent possible. Uh, so that means not letting any piece of your nav equipment go unused. So have everything backed up and then backed up again. You don't want anything uh, just like like having your nav to not do anything for you. You might as well have redundancy if you don't have anything else for it. In the GPS flight plan, I'm going to go ahead and load the RNAV runway 10 since um, winds are light and variable and uh, we do have circling weather just in case uh, we do need to circle around to the other, the other runway. Uh, I was debating on whether to use Halku or the Level Island initial approach fix, but I decided on Level Island since it's more of a traditional um, T-style RNAV approach instead of a holding in lieu of procedure turn. Uh, after I get that loaded, I decided to go ahead and lean forward and activate and load direct level island to get that out of the way. Uh, if I were actually on with ATC, I'd be able to still comply with any instructions via headings or the radio nav aids if I had to. Since this is an offline flight and the desired course is pretty much runway heading, I can just use the heading bug to comply with uh, any instructions that I need to and just kind of get me pointed in the direction of level island before uh, switching over to full up GPS navigation via the autopilot. I've got my uh, autopilot altitude set to 6000, I got that arm ready to go. I'm getting the flight director set up, I'm going to go ahead and select heading mode and I will put my nav 1 uh, up on the GPS course. So that's ready to go once I decide to switch over to GPS navigation. Also with my heading bug, I'm going to keep that on runway heading. I'll be able to fly that on takeoff until I get a little bit more stabilized uh, after departure, get uh, deconfigured, cleaned up and ready to go. Check the weather one more time. Still got light and variable winds, uh, 8 viz, and then we have that first weather layer uh, at 1800. The next one's not until 9000, so that uh, 6000 should work out fine. We have some wiggle room around there if we need to. Uh, if it's not clear at 6, we can move up to 8, and then we can always uh, deviate uh, if we need to just for weather, as long as we let ATC know. Wind light and variable visibility. Aid. Sky conditions 1,000. With this altimeter setting, it checks with the uh, the field elevation. I want to be within 75 feet of that to be in compliance with the uh, altimeter two nine three seven instrument flight check. The takeoff will be a flaps 20 takeoff. Annette standard weather. Wind light and variable visibility A. Sky conditions 1,800 broken. 9,100 overcast, temperature 6, 2.3, altimeter 2937. We'll be going through um, a little bit of weather, and the temperature isn't crazy low, but just precautionarily, we will uh, turn on the pedostatic heat, go ahead and run up the engines. 6,000 feet armed. A lot of red rudder with this big PT6. Airspeed's alive. 
everything's looking good. Pump it up a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. 85 knots up to 10 flaps. 95 knots up to uh, zero flaps. Climbing, looking good. Positive rate. Looking for about 104 uh, on the climb out here. About 2,000 BVI right now. Looks like it's going to hold it pretty well. I'm going to direct to Level Island once again just to refresh the direct course. It should still be um, not too far off, but just to get the uh, most accurate direct course. And yep, see, it's still at 312. Kind of move our way to the right, get back on that. Now we'll focus on the instruments since we're going to. Uh, go in through the weather, get the autopilot set up. Capture VVI at just above 2000. We'll uh, fine tune that here in a moment. And we're switched over to nav. So the autopilot's not following the Throughout the climb out, I'm going to be tweaking the VVI to ensure that uh, to get as close to 104. Breaking out already at about 4,000 feet, so 6,000 is going to work out fine. It's going to keep us uh, up 2,000 feet above the weather, and then 3,000 below the next next level. As our airspeed is moving back towards 104 knots, we're going to uh, continue tweaking it to make sure we don't get below that. It could be behind the power curve or anything. Thousand to go. All right, cool. The uh, the autopilot is starting to level us off. 6,000. We'll be able to set up for a cruise at this point. Once we get stabilized in the cruise, we just want to look over our systems and make sure that um, everything is operating normally and that we have our nav aid set up for the next phase of flight. Uh, the VORs and everything back in the field, we're not going to need those anymore here in a few miles. We'll kind of do like a, a unofficial changeover point to get everything uh, transitioned over to level island VOR and make sure once again that we review our plates and that um, Get the weather over there at uh, Wrangell Island. At this stage in flight, I could have, uh, for efficiency's sake, pulled back the prop to keep it between 1600 and 1900 RPM and monitor the ITT a little better to keep it below 740. Um, as I get better with this aircraft, I'll be able to uh, catch things like that and get a little bit smoother with these checklists. As we get a little bit closer, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, switch over to the Level Island VOR and Nav 1. Since we're, we're close enough, we should be able to pick it up. Um, I'm going to check to make sure that we are uh, getting positive DME that makes sense off of it. And we are. It matches the GPS stuff. And as we're getting closer, I'm going to also uh, switch over to the uh, ASOS, the weather over there at Ringle Island, and put that into uh, 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 COM2. That way, I just have it started in the background. Um, so whenever I do start to get reception from it, it'll automatically start playing instead of just having to guess. Also, Nav2, like I said, just going to use that redundancy and get that set up on the Level Island, uh, Level Island Fuel R as well. And get it set up on the course, we're going to fly off of that.
and we're getting uh, weather now from Ringo Island, so we'll be able to uh, make sure that we have the actual uh, legal weather to fly the RNAV-10 and uh, circle if we need to, but winds are light and variable, so it's just going to make more sense to do a straight into 10 instead of having to uh, work through the whole uh, circling process. Just rather not mess with that if we don't have to. Adjusting the altimeter to ensure that we get uh, accurate readings. Uh, we're about 21 miles out right now, so starting to think about descent. Descent in the Grand Caravan uh, is pretty easy. Uh, the descent checklist included with the Carinado stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, icing protection is required. It's not going to be required. We're at 7 degrees, so a pedostatic heat can come off. Uh, altimeter is set as you just saw and the GPS is set up still to uh, begin the approach. It's already loaded and activated so we just got to follow that while backing ourselves up on our uh, radio nav aids. I'm going to initially set a uh, 1000 VVI descent down to 4800 which is the, uh, the initial altitude for the RNAV runway 10. We have just under 20 miles to go, so we're not in like a big hurry to get down. It's only 1,200 feet. This will allow it to be nice and stable and smooth on the way down. Um, I forgot to pull the power back on this, so the autopilot did a really good job of uh, preventing any kind of overspeed. So it, uh, it lessens my VVI. You can see it's about uh, 500 or so, and I catch this eventually. This is when I realized that um, I did not pull my power and I was wondering why my VPI was stuck there. But now you can see it go down to the, uh, the requested 1000. And autopilot uh, is uh, captured 4800 starting to level us off as we drive towards level 1. Power comes back in. GPS and autopilot are commanding a turn to the right, so I'll go ahead and get the um, the bearing needle pointed in that direction to prevent uh, the GPS from chirping at me to reset the course needle. As you can see, I'm just skimming over the top of the weather right now, so this is a pretty good altitude. Uh, it'll keep me out of the weather for the most part, uh, so there's no need to steepen the climb because it is at or above altitude, so if I really needed to, I could um, stay above the weather and just steepen my descent later on. And the sun's setting pretty rapidly over here, so the quicker we get on the ground, the better. Alright, cool. It looks like the uh, autopilot and GPS have captured the final approach course. I'm going to turn off autopilot here in a moment and hand fly the rest of the uh, approach. I was 
doing one more quick once over to make sure everything's good to go before I come off of autopilot um, and uh, start hand flying it a little bit. Not a whole lot of time in this aircraft, but I think I do a pretty good job. It's, it's pretty straightforward to uh, any other Cessna that I had flown previously. And the, uh, uh, the PT-6 is a familiar engine to me as well. This initially has us going down to 4300 at or above there until we get to uh, Zatsu. I like to keep about a 50 foot buffer there, um, just uh, prevent any uh, deviations to really prevent from going down below if my cross check uh, breaks down at any point. That's who is the final approach fix. Like you, you want to be trimmed, level off, and on speed um, at the final approach fix. That's more important with a uh, faster aircraft, but with this one, there is a lot of uh, a lot of forgiveness able to be given uh, from this aircraft. There we have 1.7 miles to uh, YDEB, which is a 3780 at or above. So no big rush to get down, these are all at or above. Um, we want to be down to minimums uh, before we get to the missed approach point, just so uh, we get the full uh, use out of this approach kind of maximize what it's given us while still complying to the at or above altitudes. Now I'm going to start slowing down below the uh, white arc, start throwing in um, uh, at least one stage of flaps to kind of uh, slow the approach and get more stabilized as we get, as we get closer. We've still got a few miles until uh, uh, Hitley, which is the missed approach point. Being kind of new to uh, X-Plane, I wasn't uh, aware of how much the anti-collision lights uh, affected weather. so. Uh, as I was flying this, I was kind of distracted by that, trying to figure out what this light was coming from. And after watching it and post edit, I was like, yep, okay, and that was probably my, anti my uh, anti-collision lights. So lessons learned on that, and that is a real world issue too. If you have like a rotating beacon or anti-collision lights, like you're free to turn those off and it's distracting in the weather. Broke out around 20, uh, 2700. Should start seeing the runway. Yep, yep there we go. We got the runway edge lights uh, in sight. I can kind of make out the Vazis as well. A little 
right of course, correcting. Wrangle weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility 3. Sky conditions 2007. Yep, light and variable. We're going to make this just a straight in. It'll be fine. We do have circling weather, like I said, if we need it, but um, no need for it today. Throwing in some more flaps. is off. Fuel selectors are on both. Uh, fuel condition lever, lever is a uh, high idle. Prop control is max full forward, which it was the entire flight. My bad. Autopilot's off and wing flaps. We're going to do a full flap landing. Two whites on the, uh, sorry, four whites on the, the Vazzy. So a little high, but we'll, we'll capture that. Uh, get onto that glide slope, capture the aim point, and drive towards that. Seventy-five to eighty-five knots uh, down final uh, for final approach to the short final in the landing. I think this is probably my third flight in the uh, the 208, but it's it's so reminiscent of other Cessnas that it wasn't that difficult to fly. So don't judge me too harshly on uh, my approach and landing, please. Excuses, I know. About 500 feet down. Keep that nose wheel up as long as possible. Utilize the arrow braking to save the brakes. Track the flaps, we're down to a safe taxi speed. We'll take it all the way to the end. If you guys are still watching, I appreciate uh, you guys uh, joining me on this one. If you would like to see anything else in the future or have me cover anything or have any suggestions for the channel, this is a new thing I'm trying out, so I really do appreciate uh, anybody watching, especially if anybody comments and lets me know what they want to see. That would be very awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. I look forward to making more videos.